well good morning everyone so today we will discuss some stretching and sorting techniques so first uh, uh, i would like to start with stretching techniques here so we are going to discuss two stretching techniques today one is linear search and another one is binary search so you know what actually searching is searching is actually finding an element in an array until it is found or we reach to the end of the array means you are going to search for an element in an array so if it is found in the array you are going to stop otherwise uh, uh, you are going to stop if the element is found otherwise you reach to the end of the array end of the array so there are two types of searching techniques we are going to discuss the one is linear search the another one is binary search in linear search actually uh, we compare each and every element of an array one by one with the element to be found means you are going to compare the element that to be found you are going to take an array and you are going to uh, uh, compare each and every element of that array one by one with the element to be found the searching is going to stop if the element is found otherwise or we reach to the end of the array we reach to the end of the array so let me uh, explain you with an example here see so for suppose now we have this array okay we for suppose we have this array here yeah is the screen is visible to you yes sir okay so no so for suppose uh, this is an uh, array which contains the elements 20, minus 23 97 18 21 5 minus 86 64 0 and 37 so the indexing starts with 0 so uh, the searching element uh, i want to search whether minus 86 is existing in this array or not so what you are going to do here is you are going to compare if suppose the name of the array is a so you are going to compare the element to be found with a of 0 means uh, uh, minus 86 is compared with minus 23. So because it is not equal, then you will go with the next element. So a of 1 is equal to 86 or not. So it's no false. a of 2 is equal to 86 or not. 18 is equal to minus 86. False. Again, 22. So see here. You're going to compare with 97. Then you're going to compare with 18. OK. 18 then you are going to compare with 21 21 is equal to minus 86 right so this is also false then you're going to compare with 5 and minus 86 it is false then comes minus 86 so when minus 86 is equals to minus 86 so you'll say that the element is found and the searching is stopped so you're going to compare each and every element so for suppose if it is not minus 86 for suppose uh, uh, assume that I want to search whether 30 is existing in this area or not. So I'm going to compare So I'm going to compare 30 with minus 23 Okay, false then 30 with 20, 97 30 with 18 30 with 29 30 with 5 so 30 with minus 86 30 with 64 30 with 0 and 30 with minus 27 and we reach to the end of the array once we reach to the end of the array because the element to be found is uh, the element which is to be searched is not found in the array so the searching is stopped and we will display that the element is not found so the linear search we compare each and every element with an array one by one with the element to be found the searching stops if the element is found other we reach otherwise we reach to the end of the array so here is a program, the C program, which is given. So I have given two programs here. One program is actually searching for a number in an array, and another program which is searching a string in an array here. So see here, first of all, in this portion of in this portion of the code, you are going to scan the elements. You are going to read the elements into an array. Ten elements are read into an array there. Then after that, you are going to search for the element to be found. We're going to search for the element to be found. OK, so after uh, 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 reading the element, so now we start an array. So sorry, we start a for loop for i is equal to 0, i less than 10, and i plus plus. So uh, e of 0 is compared with n. OK, so 
so then a of 1 a of 2 so whenever a of i is equals to n this means then the number is found at some so and so position because a, a index starts with 0 i'm going to add 1 here and i'm going to display that the number is found at so and so position and i'm using the exit function you know very well that exit exit function is used to quit from the program so once the number is found we are going to stop so this loop if suppose uh, 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 you have given a number n which is not found in an array so you are going to compare with each and every element you are going to reach the end of this loop once this loop fails then the control comes to this statement and it is displayed that element is not found the number is not found okay the same program is given using for uh, strings also I'm, i have just scanned 10 strings here you might observe that 10 strings have been scanned and after scanning uh, i'll just scan another string then see here because we are going to uh, 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 compare the strings we are going to you i mean because we are comparing the strings here so we are, i am using the strcmp function so when strcmp of a of z a of i comma n is equals to zero when it is zero and it is returning zero there then we say that string is found at so and so position and we are going to quit Otherwise, the entire loop is run, and when the loop fails, then the control comes here, and we say that the element is not found. Okay, so this is a searching technique, the linear search here. So next, uh, another searching technique which we have is binary search. Another searching technique we have is the binary search. Now, the binary search technique is applied to the sorted array. So this is very very important point. Uh, uh, when we discuss this binary search there. It is applied only to sorted array. Most of the people for, uh, forget about this, uh, uh, forget about this and they start applying binary search to an unsorted array. Sorted in the sense, arranging the elements in some order, whether it may be an ascending order or a descending order. So once the elements are arranged in a sorted order, then you can, then you can apply this binary search here. So before uh, going to binary search, so let me uh, tell you what is the basic uh, disadvantage of linear search. So linear search is having some advantages and also disadvantages. So the linear search is simple. It is very easy to understand and implement. It does not require the data to, in the array to be sorted in any particular order. So no order is required in case of uh, linear search and it is very easy to understand and implement it. whereas in case of uh, binary search sorry the disadvantage if i talk about the disadvantage it is poor very poor efficiency because it takes a lot of comparisons to find a particular record in a big file so assume that you have some hundred elements in an array and if you are if your particular uh, element which is to be found in some 98th position then you have to make 98 comparisons before coming to a conclusion whether it is uh, there or not and also for suppose in out of the 100 elements if suppose the element which is to be found is not there at all then also you have to make some 100 comparisons then you have to come to a conclusion that it is not found okay so because of that the uh, uh, linear search is uh, slower than other searching algorithms okay uh, uh, you, you you will understand uh, the time complexity uh, as well as space complexity mainly the time complexity in your uh, da subject sir will tell you that uh, what is the time complexity and uh, of the algorithms there it is very important to analyze and calculate the time complexity it means how much time the algorithm is taking to get a value there okay so uh, uh, now to overcome this we have the binary search in the binary search the first uh, basic condition as i just said that the binary search the basic condition here is you need to have a sorted error so what you are going to do here you are going to uh, uh, compare the element uh, the middlemost element with the element to be found first you are you are going to compare the middlemost element if the middlemost element is the element which is to be found immediately the searching stops there Otherwise, you will look for whether the middlemost element is less than the element to be found or greater than the element to be found. So if it is less than the element to be found, then 
you will go for um, the right half otherwise you will come with the left half because if it is less uh, uh, if it is uh, the middle most element is less than the element to be found it won't be in the left half it will be certainly in the right half there okay so i will show you uh, uh, diagrammatically here but taking uh, here is an array so now see here this particular uh, array is there it is in the sorted order okay it is in the sorted order so now for example i want the element to be search is 18 here as it is shown here 18 now the it is compared with the middle most element 18 is compared with 5 so once because 18 is compared with 5 because, and it is not equal now we will see whether 18 is less than 5 or greater than 5 so middle most element 18 is less than 5 it is false because it is false certainly see here this uh, uh, means uh, it won't be in the left half of the array it will certainly be in the right half of the array because it is in the sorted order this side it won't be um, the element won't be existing in the left half it will be in the right half so you'll go with the right, uh, right half again you'll find the middle most element okay so again you'll go uh, you're going to find the middle most element then again you are going to search for an element and then the searching stop when the element is found so i will show you uh, uh, with an example here by taking our own example uh, if i suppose suppose now this is what this is at index 0 next one next two next three next four five here it is now uh, suppose the elements are like this in the array now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to place a variable l here as lower low index then i will have an higher index h okay then 0 plus 9 by 2 okay 0 plus 9 by 2 i'm going to find the middle most element the index of the middle most element okay now for suppose assume that assume that i just want to compare uh, uh, some I, I just want to find whether 17 is existing or not assume that i want to find whether 17 is existing or not so uh, uh, i will take l as 0 h as 9 and then i am going to find m which is l plus h by 2 so uh, see l is not 2 h is not 26 l is pointing to the index h is pointing to 9 the index of of the elements there then m is equals to l plus h by 2 m is equals to l plus h by 2 so which is equals to here 0 plus 9 by 2 4.54 4. so m will be here then i'm going to compare now suppose the name of the array is a a of 4, a of 4 contains 10, a of 4 is equals to n or not. So a of 4 is 10, 10 equals to 17, whether it is true or not, it is false. Then I will say is a of 4, is a of 4 less than n, is a of 4 less than n, yes, a of 4 is less than n, okay, 10 is less than 17, true. Then what I'm going to do here is, if it is less than 4, then I will say 
L equals to M plus 1. L equals to M plus 1. Means I'm going to bring L from here to here. Means now L is ha having 5 there. L is having 5. Then again, I'm going to find, again, I'm going to find, in the second iteration, I'm going to find the middle there. Middle means, again, L plus H by 2. Now, L plus H by 2 means L is 5. Yeah, H is 9. 9 plus 5 by 2 is 14 by 2, which is 7. Now, M comes to here. M comes here. Then, A of M equals to 17 or not. So, A of a of m, a of 7 is equal to 17. 17 is equal to 17. True. The searching stops. See, in less than two or three iterations, sorry, two, one or uh, less than two or three comparisons, we come into we came into conclusion whether the element is found or not. Okay, so that is what is the beauty of this binary search. So where we are going to iteratively compare the elements like this. So if you go to the code, if you go to the co code here. See here. Enter the numbers in a sorted order. So directly, I'm asking the user here to enter the elements in a sorted order. Once the user has entered the elements into a sorted order, then I'm going to find whether the means what number you want to search. So then L is equals to 0, H is equals to 9, as I just showed you, while L less than or equal to H. No, when actually the uh, means, uh, the group actually going to uh, um, but when we are going to quit from the loop there, when this condition becomes false, when L is less than or equal to H is true, okay, we are going to continue, otherwise we are going to come out of the loop there. So I will show you what actually it is here. So first, suppose assume that I want to find uh, 9, actually it is not there. I will again come from the beginning. So here is L, here is L. M is actually L plus H by 2, that is M. So M is actually 4 here. Now, as per code, we'll go 0 less than or equal to 9. True, M is equal to L plus H by 2, 0 plus 9 by 2 is 4. Then A of M equal to M means A of 4 equals to M. So 10 equals to 9, false. 10 equal to 9 is false. Then is a of m less than m so 10 less than m is false 10 less than m no it is 10 less than m is false then else will go to h is equals to m minus 1 so h will come here m minus 1 means 4 minus 1 is 3 h comes here okay then again it will go back go back while l less than or equal to h yes l is 0, H is 3, 0 less than 3 is true. Then again, you calculate middle uh, middle index. M is equal to L plus H by 2. 0 plus 3 by 2. So 0 plus 3 by 2 is nothing but 1. Okay. 0 plus 3 by 2 is 1. 1 1.5, that is taken as 1. Then A of M equals to N. So 5 equals to 9. False. Now again, 5 less than or equal, sorry, less than n, 5 less than n, true. Okay, 5 is less than 9, true. Then m is equals to l plus, uh, uh, sorry, l is equals to m plus 1. So l comes here. Again, you go back. While l less than or equal to h is true because 2 less than 3 is true. Then again, m is equals to L plus H by 2, 2 plus 3 by 2, 5 by 2 is 4. 4, then m comes here, means both L and m as well are both are pointing to, uh, I'll do one thing, right. Yes, both are pointing here. Then 6 less than 9 is false. Then 6 less than 9, true. 6 less than 9 is true. Then L is equals to M plus 1. So 
now l also comes here l comes here okay again you will go back again you will go back and again you will find the middlemost element now this time the middlemost element will be say both l h and m will be pointing to same position that is 3 plus 3 by 2 is 3 then 8 less than 8 equal to 9 false then 8 less than 9 true 8 is less than 9 then m is sorry l is equals to m plus 1 so l comes here see l comes here so at this instance when h is less than l and h is less than l should be always less than h but when h becomes less than l the setting stops and then we will say that the element is not found got it so this is how we are going to uh, search for an element using binary search which is certainly applied to a sorted array see remember it is a very uh, important interview question also so whenever someone asks you to explain about binary search you must start with a statement that binary search uh, is applied only to sorted array means the array which is arranged in some order then you have to explain the technique got it the same technique is uh, uh, is uh, shown for the characters also for sorry for the strings also you can study this okay so that is about binary search any doubts regarding this yes item any doubt or shall i continue Okay. I hope you understood. Okay. Next, I will uh, uh, go for. I will continue. So these are the two searching techniques. Then uh, we will now discuss about the sorting techniques here. So what is sorting actually? So sorting is the process of arranging the elements in some order. Either it may be an ascending order or a descending order. So we have a lot of sorting techniques here but mainly we will discuss about today three sorting techniques and quick sort will take time we will discuss it in the next class in the tomorrow's class we will discuss about the quick sort and another sorting technique here. so in this uh, we are going to arrange either if you go for a selection sort or a bubble sort or a quick uh, insertion sort whatever here whatever the technique here we are going to arrange the elements in some particular order whether it may be an ascending order and a descending order so if you first talk about the selection sort, in this technique, position of the element with the least value is found and it is interchanged with the first element. And the same procedure is continued with the remaining elements until the array is sorted. So what does it mean? So let us assume, let us take this uh, uh, array now. Assume that we have an array like this. Where we are having some elements number of elements okay, now now if you observe this array this array is actually completely in some uh, unsorted uh, this is an unsorted array so in selection sort, what we are going to so, uh, do here is you find the position of the element with the least value. You find the position of the element with the least value. Here, see, if you observe the position of the element, the least value is six, 1. It is at the 6th position. Sorry, at the index 6 here. OK. you. Uh, uh, The first iteration, what I am going to do here is I am going to replace 
uh, uh, observe very carefully. I'm going to replace this one with 12. This one with 12. So 12 is placed here and one is placed here. That is the first iteration. Okay. Then again, after placing this, now this is the sorted, uh, the first element. I mean, at the first index, the least element is scale. Next, you find the position of the element with the least value. So here is the element with the least value, 4. And now it is exchanged with this 5 now. It is exchanged with 5. I hope you know, I mean, so I will do it here itself. So 1 is replaced with 12, the first iteration. 1 is replaced with the 12, the first iteration. Let us assume that this is 13, for example. Now, at sixth index, at sixth index, we have the least value. Now, replace it with the first value here. So, just swap them. So, one is placed here and 12 is placed here. Next, you find the next least element. It is at index 7. So, you replace it with the second number here. So, 4 is placed here. Five is placed. It means those numbers are to swap. Next, you find the element with the least value. Five is the least element. Now you swap it with the third element. So five and six. Next, you find the element with the least value. Six. So swap it with eighteen. So put six here and you put eighteen here. Then you find the element with the least value. Seven. You swap it with 10 here. So put 7 here and 10 here. And again, you swap it with the next, you find the least element. The least element is 10. You swap it with 13. So put 10 here and 13 here. So all is already in this position. Now you find uh, and swap 18 with 13. Now if you see that the elements now are in the sorted order. So in case of the selection sort, what you are going to do here is you find the position of the element with the least value and interchange it with the first element. And then you find the second least element, you change it to the second element and the same value, the same procedure is continued until we reach to the end of the array. means until we, we sort the entire array here. Okay. Uh, Now, if you observe, see here, 17 is replaced with 11 in the first iteration. Then 33 is replaced with the next least value, 22. Then in the third iteration, 33 is replaced with 44. The fourth iteration, 77 is replaced with 44. In the fifth iteration, 88 is replaced with 55. The sixth iteration, 77 is replaced with 66. Okay, in the seventh iteration, the last iteration, 66. Uh, okay, now it is in the sorted order. Now the array is in the sorted order here. So this is how actually uh, uh, the elements are being sorted here. Just swapping them. You can go with any, you can take any uh, unsorted array and you can apply the technique. Okay, now the same is explained in the program also. The program. See, I, I just gave uh, these programs like this. See, uh, I, I applied the concepts which we have learned here. Uh, this mean function in this sorting technique is same for all the programs, all the sorting techniques. The only difference here is we will call whatever the sorting technique is required. So because selection sort, you write the selection sort code. If you want bubble sort, write the bubble sort code, insertion sort, insertion sort code, fix sort, fix sort code. 
So what I have done here, just let, let me first explain you the main, then I will talk about uh, the technique which I have done here. So first, uh, I am scanning how many number of elements are required to us. Okay, so I want 10 elements. Then uh, I'm here applying the dynamic memory allocation concept here. So we just learned in the day before class how to uh, create an array dynamically there. So int star m log of n into size of integer. So an array of size n is created. Then what I'm doing here is after creating an array, here I'm going to read the elements, the n elements into an array there. Uh, of course, here I need, I need to change, make a small change. So it is n here. Price equals to zero, I less than n, i plus plus, enter a numbers. So like uh, scanner percentage, the percent of it means the n elements are being inserted. So before sorting, before sorting, the n elements have been displayed. Here, before sorting, the n elements have been displayed here. After that, you call any one of the sorting techniques, whether it is selection sort, bubble sort, insertion sort, or quick sort. Now, again, uh, I'm applying the concept here. See, you are passing array, array name, and you are passing the number of elements there. So you know that the array name contains address of the first location. So because of that, so when you are passing array, your, uh, means it is going here and the now it is pointing this a and this a is pointing to the same array both are pointing to the same array after that after that selection sort means the, uh, the elements uh, it will go here it will sort i will explain you this code also i will explain you this code after sorting it will come back here and after sorting again if you display the elements then the sorted array will be displayed see this main is same for all the functions there the only thing here is if you want to use selection sort you go with the selection sort code if you want to go for the bubble sort go for the bubble sort or insertion sort or quick sort or any other sorting technique you have match sort riding sort heap sort number of sorting techniques are there so in case of data structures, I will discuss one or more sorting techniques there. Okay, R right now, just I will discuss uh, a few sorting techniques in this class now. Okay, now what we have done in the selection sort. Uh, see, I will explain one or two iterations. Just uh, uh, listen very carefully. I'm taking the variables here. Uh, suppose n is 10 now. You know that because we are uh, actually entered 10 elements. So n is 10. n is 10. Then you have i value which starts with 0. Then I'm saying min equals to i. So min equals to i means min is also equals to 0. Then when we then j is equals to i plus 1. No, j starts with 1. e of minimum greater than e of j. e of minimum. What is a of minimum? e of 0. Okay, this is actually in the sorted order. Now let me change it. of minimum greater than e of j e of minimum e of 0 greater than e of j 11 greater than 4 is true then minimum equals to j so minimum will become 1 again in the iteration j plus plus j becomes 2 j becomes 2 e of minimum greater than e of j e of minimum is 4 4 greater than 15 is false then j plus plus j becomes 3 4 greater than a of minimum greater than a of j 
okay four greater than six is false then j plus plus j becomes four a of minimum greater than a of j four greater than 17 is also false then j plus plus j becomes five four greater than 10 is also false false then j plus plus j becomes six next four greater than two is true this time four greater than two is true then minimum equals to j now minimum will become six Minimum will, will become six then j plus plus j becomes seven okay uh, two greater than three is false then j plus plus j becomes uh, uh, j becomes seven j becomes seven j, j, j becomes seven two greater than three is false then j plus plus j becomes eight J becomes 8 and 2 greater than 9 is false. J plus plus J becomes 9. 2 greater than 7 is also false. By this time, when J becomes 10, this loop fails. J, J greater than N, 10 greater than, sorry, 10 less than 10 is false. Then it comes here. If my I not equal to minimum, I is how much? 0. Minimum is how much? 6. See, we found the position of the element with the least value. 2 is the least value there. Then what I'm doing, I'm swapping here. Swapping. Swapping in the sense, I'm swapping 11 and 2, as I just told. So 2 will come here, 11 will go here. Then again, i plus plus. So i becomes 1. So then minimum equals to i. So minimum will become 1. j equals to i plus 1. j starts with 2. Now the same procedure is actually now continued. The same procedure is continued until the elements, all the elements are been sorted. Got it? So that is about this insertion sort. So any doubt for anyone? Respond. Is there any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No. Next, next go. Uh, let us go for the insertion sort. Let us go for the insertion sort. This is one of the very, very uh, uh, interesting and also out of all the sorting techniques, the insertion sort is one of the best technique to be used. Okay, so in the insertion sort, what we are going to do here is I'll show you here. So in the insertion sort, what we are going to do here is we are going to insert the element related to its position. Here. Means first we are going to take these two elements, first two elements, and then we are going to put them in the order there. So when 12 and 4 are there, say what I am going to do here is, so we will say 4 and 12 sorted them. Now these two elements are in the sorted order. Then you come back, take the third element. Then you take the third element. So, so, so third element is actually, see here, this is already in some position. Now these three elements are in the sorted order. So we will leave it like that. Then you take the fourth element. So fourth element will come after four, right? Fourth element will come after four. So then what we are going to do here is, we will put the fourth element here, six. Okay, then you shift the elements. So 15 is shifted to the next position. 12 is shifted to the next position. Now, this is uh, uh, means thing that it is empty. Now you put six here. So when you put six here, now these four elements now become means are in some order there. Then you go with the next element, 17. It is already in the position. Now, next you take 10. So when 10 comes, 10 comes after 6 there. Then you remove 10, put 17, shift 17 to the next place, shift 15 to the next position, shift 12 to the next position. Now you put 10 here. Then, these four elements are in 
sorry these elements are in sorted order next comes 11 where 11 should come it should come between 10 and 12 then again you put 17 here put 15 here then you put 12 here and then you put 11 here now after this iteration if you might observe that these elements now are in the sorted order next comes 3 So where three has to come, three has to come in the first position. Then you shift all the numbers to the, the next position. Seven, I'm sorry, seventeen. Here fifteen, twelve, eleven, ten, six, four. Then comes here three. Then, if you observe that these all elements are now in the sorted order, when you insert nine, wait, nine comes here, nine comes, the elements are being shifted. So nine is placed here. Then, if you observe that. These elements are in the sorted order. Then you put seven, so seven up comes here. Seven here. Now the elements are in the sorted order. This is what is the insertion sort. This is what is the insertion sort. Observe. See one and five are been shifted. Then it has six. Six two should be inserted here. So all these elements have been shifted. Okay. Then four should be inserted between two and four. It is. Then three should be inserted. Now here, see here nine. Next two. This two are being shifted two and nine. Then seven comes between two and nine. Seven is removed. Nine is shifted. Seven is placed there. Then comes five. Five should be between two and seven. Then five shifted there. Now those four elements are in a sorted order. Then you have one. One should come in the first place. So nine is shifted, seven is shifted, five is shifted, two is shifted. Then one is inserted there. Then you have four, which comes between two and five. So the elements are being shifted, and two is inserted there. Then three comes between two and four. Three shifted, and six, which comes between five and seven. That's it. Now the array is in the Sorted order. Got it? This is what is the technique. Now let us observe from the code point. We assume that I will take one array now, and I will explain you how some twelve. Assume that I have an array like this, and I just want to sort them. How this piece of code is going to work out?
హలో సార్ క్లాస్ చెప్తున్నాను సార్ క్లాస్ చెప్తాను మళ్ళీ ఓకే సో నో సి హౌ ద కోడ్ ఈజ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటెడ్ నో వీ హ్యావ్ ద వేరియబుల్స్ ఐ జే అండ్ టెమ్ అబ్జర్వ్ దిస్ వెరీ కేర్ఫుల్లీ so for i is equal to 1 so i is 1 then we have temp is equals to a of i so temp is equals to a of i in the sense temp is equals to a of 0 which is 12 okay then for i is equals to j minus 1 so j is uh, j minus uh, sorry j is equals to i minus 1 means j is 0 then see here both conditions need to be satisfied j greater than 0 and temp of Uh, temp less than a of j j greater than 0 and temp less than a of j both need to be satisfied so j greater than 0 is true 0 greater than 0 is true and temp less than a of j what is temp temp is 12 12 is less than a of j uh, sorry 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 uh, temp is equals to a of i a of i means 1 so means temp means 4 i'm sorry 4 so 4 less than temp less than 4 less than 12 is true 4 less than 12 is true then e of j plus 1 is equals to a of j see this is a single statement here this statement this is the only statement which belongs to for loop this is the only statement This is the only statement which belongs to for loop. Okay. So a of j plus 1 is equal to a of i. a of j plus 1 in the sense j is how much? 0. 0 plus 1. a of 1 equal to a of j. a of 0 means 12 comes here. 12 comes here. Again, go back. Go back means j minus minus. No, j becomes j minus minus means minus 1. So minus 1 greater than 0 is false. Now this loop breaks. Minus 1 greater than 0 is this loop breaks. Now the control comes to this statement. A of j plus 1 is equal to temp. So minus 1 plus 1. A of minus 1 plus 1 since A of 0. A of 0 is equal to temp. What is there in the temp? 4. So 4 will be replaced here. Got it? Okay. Next. Again, it will go back. So this loop, this is over. Again, it will go back. I plus plus. Now I becomes two. Temp temp is equals to a of i. So a of two is one. And again, j is equals to i minus one. So j is one now. J is one. One greater than zero is true. And temp less than a of j. So 1 less than e of j 12 is true then e of j plus 1 means e of j plus 1 means e of 1 plus 1 is 2 e of 2 is equals to e of 1 e of 2 is equals to e of 1 means 12 comes here then again j minus minus no j becomes 0 j becomes 0 again 0 greater than 0 is true and temp less than e of j so 1 less than 4 is true then e of j plus 1, 0 plus 1 means e of 1 is equals to e of 0. Okay, so here 4 comes. Then again j minus minus. So j becomes minus 1. So minus 1. Minus 1 like greater than 0 is false. Then it comes to the next statement. e of minus 1 plus 1 is 0. e of 0 is equals to temp. What is there in temp? 4, 1. One is different. Now, if you observe after second iteration, these three elements have been sorted. Like that, the remaining uh, elements are also been sorted. I mean, the remaining loop is been executed until all the elements comes in the sorted order. Okay, so I just uh, request you to take uh, one array uh, and uh, execute the code like this. Uh, I have done uh, as I have done here. 
same like that you execute the code and observe uh, how the iterations are carried out then you will have a better understanding okay so that is about the insertion sort uh, so we will stop here today and tomorrow i will continue with two more sorting techniques okay any doubts no sir no sir okay see compulsory no, you, you need to uh, uh, work on the code there it's not just uh, i am explaining then you are closing and they were coming back there you have to take the code and uh, i have provided you the code you have to execute it uh, sorry you have to work on that on the paper uh, then you will remember the logic forever okay so thanks for joining okay. tomorrow we will continue any doubts are there you can ask me thank tomorrow. you sir okay ma'am take care thank you sir thank you sir okay thank you sir